not talk about future existing and uh, keeping going without talking that green side of uh, how we are doing business. So uh, it should be for me uh, be better to start by that part. And uh <laughs> and uh, so uh, if uh, if Kumba can tell us how sustainability today it's uh, it's managed, how 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 to grow it controlled. Because what we see now in uh, most of the country, it's like uh, like Europe start doing things without uh, they, are they are creating uh, stuffs without thinking about the future. And now when Africa starts creating some things, they tell us, no, 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 guys, we, we ca you cannot do the same way. But uh, what is the deal? How to be sustainable? How to do things today and uh, still keeping keeping it sustainable, green and fair? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Philippe. This is an interesting question. As you know, everybody is now impact on the effect of climate change around the world. We are thinking sustainability and uh, durability regarding the increase of the temperature around the world. And now as African, as youth, and as uh, organization, we have to promote new... Hello. We have to promote now new, technolo new technologies and innovation, how to can build more sustainable. And this is why we came up as international organization. We are working mostly on the climate finance, but we can do climate finance without working on the sustainable development part. It's really important now, how to link the SDGs with the international protocol, such as the Paris Agreement, the National Adaptation Plan, and the other international and climate finance policies. And during these two last years, we work with the Ministry of uh, Environment and the Ministry in charge of youth and employment to see how we can create green job. Because this is something really new. We are thinking about job, but how we can make sure that future generation will have income, but also can create product and technology that will be respectful for the environment and the planet because we are living now in a healthy environment but we don't know for the future generation what they will be face now we are seeing seeing mostly some uh, impact regarding the rainfall here in abidjan since april we, we have the season of rain the rainfall season and it's not normal but we are facing that last week we are feeling we are facing some flood and we have to think how we can mo work on more sustainable and urban cities. This is this type of technology that we want to promote. And so we developed an interesting project with the Korean agency to create green job for youth, but also how we can uh, access uh, digitalization for youth. There is still a gap because we need to work on the ICT skills, but also how we can have more green job. And uh, we have um, a grant from COICA around $9 million. And uh, we are working with the Prime Minister Office and other ministries. And thank you for the government for their support since the beginning of this uh, initiative. And now we are starting implementing this project. We are aiming to support 45,000 youth around Cote d'Ivoire, not only in Abidjan, because we are thinking big, we want to involve some universities because we want to start at the earlier stage of the career journey of the youth. We are working with high school, uh, sorry, universities, sorry, sorry, and Marys sorry, sorry, because we don't want to let out the drop out school on any other vulnerable groups. So we are trying to push this initiative, working mostly on building ICT digital infrastructure around the country building skills in terms of uh, strengthening the capacities of youth on ICT, yeah. working on the green academy leadership. This is something new because green is really new in our country. We don't want to do similar things as Europe and America, but we want to see how we can uh, build on what we have in Africa in terms of technology, in terms of uh, no, uh, endogen knowledge, we see the agri the farmer has some technology they are using since some decade. How we can build on that and also elevate more agri tech and fine tech. In global, this is what we want to promote and also develop this type of events such as the pitch, 
the incubation and accelerator program to create and to link investor and the youth entrepreneur to make sure that they will have enough cap capital to become more sustainable. So this is in overall what we are doing in Cote d'Ivoire and uh, thank you for inviting us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Let's give it up for Kumba, please. The, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is great to, uh, to understand that you, you, you don't forget where we are coming from and uh, sometimes we, 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 we get good things that we may, be, uh, some we may forget. And I will, uh, I, I will ask you, Stefan, please, to tell us uh, today um, where, where are we in Ivory Coast and uh, what are like um, current initiatives? Can you tell us uh, the, the way we, we, we made things uh, that can help to grow but and to be sustainable? So from a standpoint of uh, the digital uh, uh, transformation of Amricos and the economy of Amricos, uh, on our front, there is a, a few initiatives that we are trying to put in place in order to uh, make sure that uh, whatever growth that we, we want to bring uh, is sustainable. And that's working with organizations like the GGGI, but also uh, setting up uh, the laws that are promoting and uh, fostering uh, sustainability in our uh, development. So uh, from a standpoint of uh, ITC and uh, what's happening around uh, um, the, the uh, our specific ministry, we have a couple of uh, initiatives that we have put in place in order to um, uh, promote the digitalization, which will be more sustainable than uh, current processes that exist uh, across uh, the government but also education, which is uh, getting people to be uh, trained and upskilled in order to be able to, um, to uh, provide that, uh, that ta the talent and the, the manpower that will be uh, really taking care of uh, the environment and uh, following all the ODD's uh, rules. So that goes through education, but it also goes through setting up the, the right uh, regulation, and it also goes through enabling uh, our existing uh, startups, founders, for example, to be um, uh, trained and also nurtured towards uh, taking care of the environment. And we have a campus startup project that is aimed at uh, really focusing on the needs of the government and uh, how we can actually address some of the areas that are not necessarily uh, covered by uh, some of the existing incubators. So in those, uh, one of our focus is on the climate and uh, and the way we can uh, generate new technologies that will help uh, address the needs uh, in the environment uh, side. Which is good. <coughs> but I have, a, I have a question. You know, when we, uh, it was the same thing I was, uh, I was trying to, uh, <coughs> I, I, I was uh, saying before, it's like, like now I, I can we can see in Abidjan uh, cabling, you know, people are making a new, new cable and uh, we have fiber everywhere. But how come we start today? We are in 2025, 20, you know, but at uh, 24. But I still see each company doing their own cable. And at that time, how can you tell me these things? It's like it's green decision because we can make like, like in some other country, you can have one way for everybody making it more green. It's some kind of decision we have to take now uh, to start new things, but uh, to do it in a right way. D do, do we have in Cote d'Ivoire like some good decision to help people to make it the right way? So there was a bad decision in the past, so we are trying to correct that. <laughs> so I'm not going to point fingers, but uh, what Please I can do. say... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I can say is uh, it wasn't done properly, and that's the reason why we are facing this situation. People had to wait for the government to set up something that is broad enough and can be uh, uh, central enough for people to just use it and for the government to actually make money out of it. But what happened is because of lack of solutions, every single operator started doing his own thing because they couldn't wait for the government to do something that wasn't coming. They have been waiting for too long. And uh, not only the operator, but the, the public also was waiting for that to happen. So they had to go their own way and set things up their own way, and this is not really ideal. And uh, there's a lot of um, 
adjustment that we are trying to do now to course correct what happened in the past, but uh, it was a situation that I totally agree with you was not uh, ideal. As of right now, there's a new approach that is trying to centralize a little bit uh, what is uh, left uh, to do. There is about uh, 5,200 kilometers of fiber optics that uh, are, have been made uh, out of the 7,000 that we wanted to do. So for the remaining set, we're gonna take um, ownership of that now and uh, set it up in a central way. So again, too bad we couldn't do that earlier, but uh, it's never too late to do right. Yes, this is a great decision. Thank you. Dr. Murphy, uh, please, on what you guys are doing now, can you uh, come up with, uh, with an example? Yes, with an example where uh, we see growth and um, some kind of partnership, the, w the way it makes to be sustainable. Sustainable miking. Now sustainable miking works. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Um, again, I'm, su I'm super glad to be uh, with old friends. <laughs> and the truth is that at, at the beginning, I wasn't looking that much at, at Africa. And one of the first people I met was 13 years ago in Syriac. It was in a small house, uh, and they had a lot of computers. I went with my brothers. You know, we were coming back from Europe, as you're talking about Europe. And we were like, oh, we're going to digitalize everything, you know. And then we went, and we, s we saw at that point, it was in 2011, that Syriac uh, was already doing uh, a lot of great things with a lot of people. And we stay in the same group for like 13 years. Can you imagine? In the same WhatsApp group. So, <laughs> so digitalization, no? it, 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 it's helped for sustainable relationships. That's the first thing. <laughs> so just um, I, I'll play my academic because I'm, I'm, let's say I'm the doctor of the panel. So let's agree on a few terms, OK? Uh, you, you've heard about sustainable growth. All of you have heard about sustainable growth. And some of you might ask, uh, might wonder, what is sustainable growth? Is it only um, making money and taking care of the environment? Well, no. Uh, it's a broader than that. And I think that's what uh, uh, Kumba, if I may, uh, you can call me Makini, of course, was trying to explain. But I will just add something. Sustainability is about three dimension, And they are even discussing a fourth one, which has implication for what is sustainable digitalization. And you will understand myself now. So you, sustainability is about economy, is about the society, and is about the environment, right? So if you take these three dimensions into account, that means that you won't have sustainable digitalization if companies do not make money, if the government does not solve the problem of society, and if we, don't, we do not care all of us together, government, public, civil society, about our environment. So there are three dimensions. That's the first thing. So from that point of view, if I introduce a new technology, let's take an artifact, a technological artifact that you are now handling, a smartphone, right? If I go and I say, oh, I'll give a smartphone to all of you, very good, no? Economically, people will spend money on the smartphone, operator will get money, etc. But then when I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm giving like, okay, I say I, you have a full, uh, same access to the phone, right? But not everybody has the same revenues, the same income. So I'm already introducing an inequality when I'm giving the phone equally to everybody like that. Last point is environment. When I give you the phone to all of you, what about your old phone? For example, who knows where is, where is the phone that he had in 2010? Who knows? Eh, right, right, okay? So we don't know where are the phones that we had uh, 10 years ago. They are somewhere, and we call them e-waste, electronic waste. And this is where we come to what is sustainable digitalization. Then this is the second definition after sustainability. It's the exploitation of the creation, exploitation, diffusion of digital technology to, for example, optimize the business processes, to uh, create uh, better customer experiences, and to solve some fundamental uh, developmental challenges. Okay, this is, this is what is digitalization in doing. Now, if you bring the two together, you think about how the technology is made how the technology is deployed, and then how the technology is exit, right? So the life cycle of the technology, the supply chain of the technology matter in the way you think about sustainable digitalization. And this is why I like the title, and uh, maybe we should get to that one, public-private partnership for sustainable digitalization. It means that the public will rely on the technological expertise of the private sector or the financial and economic efficiencies of the private sector to fasten sustainable digitalization. 
So this means that the government should have a vision about what is sustainable digitalization, accounting for the whole life cycle of the technology, and then identify in the private sector the actors that are financially, operationally efficient, plus new criteria, environmentally and socially efficient. What does it mean? So the PPP that my dear Stefan have to found, they will have several criteria. Financially, they will be uh, uh, efficient, the private sector actor. What this is not what we find now. So again, he said we have to help the private sector to become efficient, no? And then environmentally, they will have criteria, and then socially, they will also have criteria. And this is what I've changed. And we call that. And then I'll stop to that because the moderator is like firing at me. You know, like stop talking. <laughs> this is and and this came with the pandemics. We call them digital public private partnership. They came out with the pandemic. And if you want to contextualize a bit. Uh, the World Health Organization did a partnership with Avanade and Microsoft so that they could use technologies, so use information to fight infection. Mm. We also have other mm. partnerships, and I think our government can also take inspiration from that. Google, Twitter, Facebook in 2020 made an agreement with the UK government so that they will agree on the fact that no company will be profiting from the misinformation. And then they set it up some criteria. So it means that uh, if we don't have a private sector that is forward looking, if we don't have a private sector that is efficient and that understand what are the different dimensions of sustainability, it will be difficult for our government to rely on public private partnership to address the issues related to sustainable digitalization. Thank you, moderator. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> but I, 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 it's, it's like, it's like there, is a, there, there is a question also or something w in what you are, you are saying to Stefan, but I will, uh, I will jump. <laughs> I will jump and then move to, uh, move to Syriac. Because when we talk about uh, sustainability, we're also talking about replicability. You know, it's, uh, when you create something, it should um, last or the way to make it last, because most of the time we talk about uh, sustainability, but in digital, also one thing to think about it, um, uh, open sources. You know, the, the way things can be done after, and uh, the way we can copy it, the way we can replicate it. And what you have done since, uh, uh, since I met you, <laughs> like <laughs> some, 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 some 10 years or 20 years <laughs> back, you 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 still keep it um, on that way, and I would like I would like you to share with us your experience of uh, how, how you keep it uh, that way, how how you keep people around you. Because when we call you chief of the village, it's also a way to make it sustainable. Because people always rely on you, and you linked every te you linked technology to people. You linked uh, new 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 actors uh, uh, comes in on uh, also opportunities. This is also the way to make it sustainable. And also you train people because training is also a point to make it sustainable. Please, can you share your experience with us? Well, <laughs> okay. Let me start as uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, there are not, uh, some people doesn't speak about and entrepreneurship in, in Cote d'Ivoire, but in my mind, with Vitib, Vitib is a technology village in, in Bassam. We we designed the the hackathon for them to 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 grow off the some some startup, and after that, the Vitib create some incubator on in Vitib to to, to, to to take them, and we coming with uh, another players to to train uh, to train them and to to show them the the possibility what you can do with the technology after that i i think the we we start the first startup weekend event in abidjan is uh, ten, <laughs> 10 years ago and some players come come to help this the, this uh, this initiative uh, they give some some prize, some computer, and uh, some time. And the political coming and saw this initiative, and he say, "Ah, that's good. How 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 we can help you and another people to grow up this this initiative?" 
and it's the first time we talked with the government about entrepreneurship in Cote d'Ivoire. And when I want to jump, oh, wow, it's <laughs> 10 years, no, eight, 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 uh, eight years ago, we discussed the Google, Eric Schmidt, the Google P P PDG come in Abidjan, and nobody don't know that. Is you want to sort just three person, me and two another person to discuss about technology in in Cote d'Ivoire and the president. Yep. Huh? What president? No, he was supposed to see three. No, 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 no. You the president that doesn't president. know Eric Schmidt was in Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, okay. When you go back, the people saw. That's why you are the chief of the village. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And in the discussion, we discussed about data center. Google want to put data center in, in Cote d'Ivoire. We discussed, we discussed. But after, they not put for, two, for two, two things. Because some people, and is a, is a big problem in just, not in just Cote d'Ivoire, but I, I fly around many, many, many countries in Africa, is the same thing. One people say, if Google want to come here, what, what is the gain? Qu'est-ce qui gagne? Je sais pas comment dire ça en anglais. Tellement. <laughs> <laughs> en fait, what the benefit of one guy? He doesn't show, he doesn't show the, 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 the benefit of, of the, 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 people, the country, yes. of the region. Just him. And Eric Min was there in school. But uh, this guy is crazy. I say... You, you, you tell that is not me to that and go back. After that, Facebook coming and we discuss and to start in to, to do something with the Minister of Communication about and help uh, our country to make some, some law to and because in the Facebook, there are not the view, point of view of in Cote d'Ivoire and our region. For Facebook, Africa is limited. South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, and like Egypt. But you don't show what the people can do with with uh, with technology here. And we, we, I remember that we explained them. One initiative is police school. How many citizens can help another citizen? to have a good life, to, to give some information on your And the point of view of n Facebook is like now meta change for the what people in our region use the, this, this platform. After that, I can speak, spoke about the relationship with public and sector private, like government and private sector, the don't like CGC. We go to Morocco and we saw the techno park. And when yeah. we come back, the government take a, comment je vais dire ça? The government say we want to replicate the, the same thing, the same thing right. here. And pira yeah. pira the, 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 the place was, was take is was pyramid <coughs> to be the techno park in Côte d'Ivoire. From six years ago, from now, that nothing that nothing that the project it go down. Yeah. When you saw these these things, we we take three decisions. How you can help the government to to understand the possibility what a digital economy ki can do in the country. And you do that with many discussion uh, with government. I think it's, it's goes, it goes straight because we, we have like five minutes now. <laughs> it goes, uh, th thank you for uh, uh, what you shared with us, Syriac. I will jump to uh, Stefan bef uh, before to get back to Kumba. And you know, in what um, Syriac say right now, it's like, I always think that in uh, every country in the world, you have two ways to develop things. Sometimes it's bottom up, and sometimes it's up down. 
and uh, Syriac is one of good example of bottom up. It's it's like it starts something and then government will follow, and this is also the way things can be done in uh, some other country. In the Indian, they call it Jugad or something. Some yes, Jugad innovation. Be people start doing something and then government are like shocked and then oh, I, I have to jump in, and also uh, but today in what is happening uh, do you have a process to 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 like um to to listen to to the country to say to listen to the people how do you do that because uh, you know before we start we were talking uh, uh, with a uh, friend and we were thinking about like how sometime because we feel like sometime you government guys you are somewhere in another country and we guys we are in another country <laughs> so <laughs> You are inside, and uh, please accept today. No, no. <laughs> accept actually, today, we can. Actually, <laughs> yeah, actually, this is uh, this is the reason why we are here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the change we want to bring about. And if we are not listening to what you are saying, and uh, prevent you for telling us the reality of what's happening, we we'll never know, and we're gonna stay in our tower somewhere in another country. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to be part of this country. We want to be part of this change, this ecosystem. And uh, the role of the government has to be clear in everybody's mind. We don't have the role of generating these innovations. Mm -hmm. We have the role of creating the framework in which you guys in the, public, uh, the private sector can generate the innovation. We want to be a catalyst for what can happen. We want to create the environment that is favorable for innovation but we cannot bring the innovation ourselves. So we want the Syriac, we want the innovators, the founders, the entrepreneurs to be the one really freed and uh, really ready to go and uh, innovating and creating. So what do we do in order to enable that? Is to listen to the needs of the environment, uh, the ecosystem, is to generate the laws. Uh, we just passed the, the Startup Act uh, recently to make sure that uh, the ecosystem is protected as a certain set of uh, regulations, uh, a framework guidelines that can guide people and protect them, give them advantages for those that have uh, the official labels and, and stuff, but also it generates the basic infrastructure that the, the pr private sector can actually leverage, make sure that the internet conne uh, connections are available, um, that uh, everybody has the structure and environment to be able to uh, to be successful. And then when we see that there are areas in the, the economic sectors that maybe are lacking the type of innovation we want, then the government can step up. And that's what we are trying to do through the Confu Startup, which is targeting the areas where innovation is not really uh, as fast as we wish based on the government needs. And we address that by generating some kind of incubation around those areas. So. It's a very big change we are trying to bring about. We want to create a platform for the whole ecosystem to communicate, express themselves, but also partner between themselves, between startups, with incubators, accelerators, with investors, all present on the same platform. We want to generate a new Ivoire Tech Forum where everybody will be also presenting the, the, uh, the advancements and all the, all the energy that is around our ecosystem right now. And uh, the change that is happening is due to a uh, political decision to create a new ministry. And this ministry is less than a year old. And in that ministry, there's a new direction, which is also brand new, uh, a direction for innovation and startups. So there's a big change happening uh, from the public uh, side, uh, taking, uh, you know, understanding the needs that we have right now and uh, becoming more serious about uh, being a, a player and a partner. Like government, it's part of ecosystem, and you are you are you are not in another country uh, with us. <laughs> and uh, Kumba, please, uh, uh, you know, also still talking about some things coming from uh, bottom bottom to up, you know, and. Um, it's like you also working on regulation, right? Because you're not talking about sustainability without some uh, some rules and uh, t and regulation. And to make it green, you are the one sometimes thinking about or oh, maybe designing or maybe uh, advice. And um, do, do you guys have like um, some example of uh, some advising or some decision you took 
how it impact uh, impacted the way uh, the country is uh, doing or startup are growing or business are making may making that uh, yes yes I hope it's working now uh, what we are doing is not simply taking the two type of uh, consultation you have the bottom up and you have the top down but what we are trying to improve is the co-creation we bring in the same table the government the private sector and the youth to really assess that need in terms of uh, development technology and this is what we do what we did when we are generating this project for, ex for example so what we are doing is to try to see how the government can enable the environment because they are the ones who can uh, create some decree, some order and law. And as VGGI, we are providing some policy document in which that we think that if the government adopts it, it can be foster the green entrepreneurship and the regular entrepreneurship in the country without uh, uh, expecting the youth and the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable group. And uh, last, last year we did something really interesting, not on the green digitalization, but the green building, because now we are seeing that most country want to work on the green building side. We can have building, but more sustainable and resilient on the impact of climate finance. And what we did is to develop some standards for to promote green building, and we worked with the Ministry of Energy, the Minister, the Ministry of Construction, Environment, and the Ministry in charge of finance because we have the environment side, how we can work on the local material here to reduce the carbon low emission. Energy, because it's quite important to have uh, enough light in a building without turning on the electricity. And also the Ministry of Construction, construction because they, they are the ones who deliver permit. And the Ministry of Finance, how we can have some incentive in terms of tax to reduce uh, some uh, importation or any other material. This is something really interesting that we did and now we think the interministerial order will be validated by the core ministry and move so on. So this is what we are trying to do. Not only going to bottom up or top down, but co-creating something without uh, excluding the private sector, without excluding the government or the civil society. So you, you, you invite uh, uh, all, all, all the partners on yes, the exactly. around the table. Because we need to understand what are they need, assess it, and try to give some that, uh, that, that means uh, it's uh, zero, zero minutes now <laughs> left. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, please, I, I, I would like, uh, it's, it's good to, to say like you have, um, you invite all, uh, all the partners around the table, but means it seems like we are one partner is not uh, on that panel it's founders you know <laughs> because uh, to be sustainable we need money also we, we need funds and uh, I know there are somewhere here some funders, <laughs> some funders you know investors so we, 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 we t I, I think uh, yes <laughs> but you know <laughs> government uh, are not supposed to be kind of investors you know they are making the environment so and but but uh, I wish we could talk about uh, CI twenty C event, which uh, which I see like it's one of the good example of also PPP and uh, what they are doing. I, I saw I saw some of them growing up faster because I work with they are working with uh, government. This is also I, I would like Stefan to say something about uh, that uh, C event, but uh, I, 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 I will uh, leave the mic to. Um, to you guys from uh, that yeah. side to yeah. to Dr. Dr. Yeah, Maffini. Because I'm in the board. Yes, of <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can start before Stefan. No, Stefan, I, I'm fine. I want to know what the government thinks about but, but it. But that will be our last words about it of and uh, then yes. you guys can. I yes. know time is almost up. But, but uh, we, we, have only we have only one minute, please. All right, so <laughs> very quick then. Uh, I think this is something to encourage. I think it's a great example of a successful partnership between the public and the private sector. And um, this has made a huge difference in the way our ecosystem has, has been uh, seen and the way it's growing. So um, definitely something to encourage. I want say even to be even broader than the, the position it has right now. I want this to be, mm -hmm. uh, them to play a role of, uh, of mentors for the up and coming uh, set of founders and, um, and uh, entrepreneurs that are coming up. 
and uh, it's a, a great example that can be replicated in other countries. And I know people are seeing Saver as a as a successful example and want to replicate that in other countries. So it's definitely something that we are proud of and want to continue such collaboration and uh, make sure that uh, now through Saver we uh, aim at having some unicorns, uh, unicorns uh, coming from Ivory Coast. Good. Dr. Martin, please, uh, can, you <laughs> can you also come, <laughs> come, come <laughs> no, up on... Uh, my point is a bit different uh, because yeah. I'm in the board, so I can also take this di this way and uh, uh, very briefly. Um, the point is that Saver is a consortium of 15 startups. They have different productivity patterns, they have different product, different competitiveness pattern. Yeah. And that there's a framework in between the CI20 and the government, and Stefan was not there uh, yet, but uh, our dear Sete Fadiga was, was here since the beginning. Uh, so it was a collaboration because at the beginning there was a need for uh, awareness raising. That's what Syriac was saying. So say even put themselves as an advisory board, as an advisory body uh, to uh, make the government aware about digitalization. Now, what we need for people to believe that Saver is a successful example, we will need to see and to analyze the different contracts that have been operated by CI20 for the government. For example, one is, for example, putting a platform to collect tax money, for example, one. Another one is making cards so that people, uh, the cocoa farmers, could get their revenues for that. But we need to measure. We need to know how much employment have been generated from that. We need to know how much this is in terms of GDP, in terms of growth creation. Only with this condition we could try or we could tell other countries, look, you can replicate. But you are in the on the board, right? Uh, yeah, so but I'm, I'm, I'm on the board because I was the first one to do an innovation survey on okay. them. But what I'm saying is that, uh, again, this is both a win-win for the government of the CIC uh, saver if we can show the employment and the growth that have been generated by the different contracts where these 15 firms have been involved. You know, and, and just one thing, and I'm, I'm closing on that. Sorry, uh, Mohamed. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Sorry, okay. but one thing, we are talking about public-private partnership, but it is important that all of us know here that in Ivory Coast, since 2012, there was what we call the CNP PPP, Comité National de Pilotage de Partenariat Public Privé that has been implemented, and the decree for organization signed in 2018 or 2019. In terms of digitalization, out of, out of the 14 products they've received in terms of PPP, uh, uh, digitalization and modernization concern around seven or eight projects. So if we want to make the thing right for this, we have to better connect the, the, the ministry with this committee. Of course, it, it's a learning curve. Eh? It's a learning curve. So we have to accept it's a learning curve. We have to connect them so the experience will be capitalized at the level of the, of the state because this committee is uh, hosted at the presidency. So the faster we can show that this PPP for the digital has been working even in a few fields, okay, the faster we'll be able to convince the higher uh, uh, level policy that uh, these digital public-private partnerships are working. Why? Because Stefan cannot implement digitalization with private sector if we don't have capabilities and if we don't have resources. And we have to be clear here, we miss the resources to upgrade our private sector so that they will properly help the public sector. And if they don't say that, we can say that for them. They need resources, <laughs> they need capabilities, otherwise we will not make it, and we will be lagging behind in 10 years' time with all country going forward yes, and yes. us being the tail of the growth story or the sustainability transition Drop story. The Drop the mic up. <laughs> <laughs> Mafini, Philip. Uh, two from the public sector. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, uh, Syriac, and Kumba, please, you guys, Thank let's you. give it up for them. Let's give it up for them. Honestly, it's a personal note. It was one great panel. Uh, you guys all had a presidential postures. When I see Stefan, when I see Mafini, it's like two uh, future president, uh, three future president. Honestly, it was perfect. Uh, we PPP, can go. Eh? Say again. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on and on and on. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to say. Philip, if you don't mind, we'll start taking at least two questions, and then we've got to move on to the next panel, and then come back for the awards. It's so okay. it's okay. Questions, I'm sure we do have questions, right? If not, you guys can go all over, you know, from uh, Philip and then Mafini, you know, your last take on it, and then we can go move on to the next uh, panel, if you don't mind. Yes, I, I, I have a question. <laughs> okay, please.
it's it's still um we talk about grow, grow, growth and uh, but ppp most of country in africa thinks that uh to create like new um millionaire or uh, new rich or younger or some they it's true uh ppp partnership or something initiative and if you even if you see nigeria or some of them it's uh, it's also uh, it comes from a government um initiative or something so but do you think in ivory coast it's is it open i think one of the from your experience I would like, I would like Dr. Maffini to say, do you think it's open market? It's fair market, or it's a small group of people? Sometimes in uh, some other country in Africa, it's same things. It's uh, ministers get the market, uh, wife, kids, and cousin, and <laughs> still the sa in the same group. Do you think it's a kind of a, a fair market uh, regulation? Is it um, something is there to to regulate and uh, avoid any problem? Or um, what are your point of view about uh, PPP in Ivory Coast? Uh, okay, this is not the uh, traditional PPP in Ivory Coast are not for digitalization and they're for building bridge. For example, people that know the Henri Conan Bédier build uh, bridge, for example, has been done through a PPP. So normally they are in infrastructure or water provision, energy provision. They're not used to be in digitalization. Now digitalization is new. I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to finger at the country, or because we find it in many countries, and also in Europe. I was working eight years at the European Commission. Do you think that people just want market like that? <laughs> it's about business, about relationship. Go in Italy, you will see. I mean, is it there's a family relationship, things like. So it's always been like that. We call it the sociology of innovation and startups. So it's all yeah. over. And in France, mm. they have the same issue. P startup that get the money are the one that are connected more or less to one of the of the top uh, uh, people in the in the CAC 40, right? So Ivory Coast is not an exception. We have to be fair about that. Now, whether the market is fair, no. We know the market is not fair. There's no fair competition that doesn't exist. Now, what the private sector can do, that's what they even did, and what Gothic, also, there's also the Gothic, which is the, the, the group for all the organs working in it, is to go together and to say, look, even if we don't get the market ask, if we are 10 firms, 20 firms, uh, Gothic is more than 100 members you can discuss with us so we can provide you the infrastructure of the service because we concentrate 100 people. It's a way to start. And then after you put simple criteria. I want, for example, that you help me digitalize all the University of Ivory Coast, all the enrollment process of the universities. I want this firm to do that. But I want that in the, uh, uh, the, the achievement of the market, you keep 15% for startups, 10% for SMEs and this, so you start putting criterias and they exist. There are criterias for PPPs that avoid, try to avoid this. So you give, you know that the market will go toward the big ones, but you ensure that the paint of the bridge can be done by the SMEs, okay. even if the bridge is made by the large firm. So it's just so a it's matter it's of sharing the So it's better to go in a, in a group or to understand the sociology of- At the, of beginning, at the yes. beginning is better, otherwise what will happen? And the discussion were also at the Gothic, because if they don't get together all the Ivorian operators in the uh, ICT sector, but they will be uh, 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 taken over by foreign ones. And this yeah. happened in a lot of places. So either we get together at the local level, or we're gonna be more divided by the external forces. Thank you, of thank you for that uh, advice. <laughs> and uh, uh, Syriac, do you think this is the Ubuntu spirit or something in in a, in, a, in the <laughs> ecosystem? <laughs> because uh, because one of the things I got is like to go uh, to go like in a group to go together, and then your your voice would be loudly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, what I take the PPP example for. She mentioned uh, Gothic. Like with Gothic, in I think uh, 10, 10, 10 years ago, we're going to discuss with, with the government to defiscalize the device, the, the electronic device. It's, it's, the, it's the Gothic initiative to go into, to, to because and the Gothic and CGC initiative, and today is the one you, 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 you want to buy the some device, the price is low because the there are some defiscalization about that. But uh, is one example what I give. It is and great. The digital. Yes. But uh, but Stefan, 
from my uh, from your experience this is also the 10 second last word <laughs> and uh, can, can you come up with like uh, that, that example of the good way from your advice your point of view now what is the good way for ecosystem to come to the government I think it goes back to the idea of um, really being a player and partner in the ecosystem. Uh, what I want to create is a platform for the ecosystem where everybody is involved, where every needs or market needs or needs from the government is expressed there. So our startups have the information of what the government needs mm -hmm. and can generate solutions That'd that be are seen by everybody. I want to change this whole idea of uh, uh, secretive uh, Passation de marché and and stuff and uh, and uh, make sure that uh, everybody has uh, a visibility into what's happening and we are all in the same platform and when two startups for example see that there is a potential opportunity to collaborate can you guys make an applause <laughs> <laughs> please <laughs> this is great this will be a great initiative right uh, so hopefully <laughs> we can make that happen and uh, I'm gonna be looking forward to uh, getting in the everybody's input on uh, how to make it uh, even better. And like they say, yes, uh, you can. Uh, can we have Kumba for the last word, please, of this panel? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have uh, now uh, a clear idea on what's going on in Cote d'Ivoire. I was happy to meet Syriad and uh, Stefan. And I think we will build on this current initiative because on digitalization, we saw a lot of initiative implemented by Orange and other partners. And we want to build on synergy to build to build something more impactful and this is what we are doing and I hope we'll be in touch to move forward and make uh, Africa and Cote d'Ivoire specifically more digitalized. More digitalized. And Thank indeed uh, the African Tech Ecosystem Accelerator. You guys, we need an Africa Arena every Thank day. You. If Thank you, you agree with me, let's uh, give it up uh, for the whole team.